Hey guys, and welcome to the video. And this another episode of Hacking Modding News and Info. This is a weekly segment that I do where I go over and cover and highlight some of the information regarding the hacking, modding, homebrew, jailbreak, and emulation scenes that I think viewers of this channel would either find helpful, informative, useful, or just entertaining. There is a strong focus here on consoles and handhelds, but we do cover stuff regarding PCs and phones and other platforms as well from time to time. And pretty much everything I cover is strictly oriented towards the end user. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what's gone down over the past week or so. And we begin over at the PS4 scene where first up, we have a few menus that have been released by Lethal for 6.72. Some of them have been updated and I think one or two might be new. This is primarily designed for those who want to self-host. If you are using Lethal's host menu online through your uh, PS4's browser, I believe the most current one as of the making of this video is still version 8, so you can continue to use that. But if you like self-hosting like I do, then you have a few options here. You can try them all and see which one you like best, or just try the ones that are most appealing to you. There's this one here, which is a new style one, and it actually looks pretty nice and clean. There's the PS4 updated for 6.72, which he initially didn't want to release because of all the instability of 6.72. You can try it out, see how it works for you, but it is a work in progress, so just keep that in mind. But you do, again, have a few choices here. All the files you need are here. Just make sure that you read the instructions on what it is that you need to do in order to successfully self-host these. And I'm sure that no matter which of these that you use, any of them would be better than that dumpster fire host menu that I reviewed yesterday. And next we have a bit of news regarding the PS4 scene, and it has to do again with developer The Flow. So reports started coming out that The Flow had collected another bounty on something that's PS4 related. And sure enough, when you come here to Hacker One, once again, he has collected a $10,000 bounty, and this was closed one day ago. Now, when it says close like this, it means that it is not open to the public. The last one that he did a few months ago where he got paid out 10 grand, which is this one right here, that one has a disclosed listed right there because it is open to the public. Sony allowed it and you're even able to go in there and download the exploit. But here, because it's closed, this one is not open to the public, so we can't see what it is. Now, some people have speculated, hey, this might be PS Vita related. But when we go here to the policy, we can see that Sony groups together PS1, PS2, PS3, the Vita and the PSP as out of scope. These out of scope things, they're all older, all these consoles they don't pay that much, I assure you. If he got 10 grand, it's something that's PS4 related because even for PlayStation Network, the highest payout is three grand. Now the question is, what was it? Who knows? At this time, the only thing we could do is just speculate. Don't just assume that this is something that's going to get leaked out or released because this does have that closed status. It has not been disclosed, but it could be something that makes its way to the public. We'll see about that. But remember, the flow clearly stated that he was done with the PS4 scene from all the backlash that he got from the first $10,000 bounty he collected. Well, apparently, I guess, being done with the scene means he just wasn't going to interact with people because he's still collecting that PS4 cash. So anyway, let's see if this manifests into anything for the public later on down the road. And next up, if you are a fan of wrestling, if you have WWE 2K19 on your PS4, and if it's this version of the game, and if your PS4 is on 505, then you might be in for a treat. Tekken 57 has ported over these mods that were designed for the Steam version of the game, but they've been ported over to work on PS4. Everything you need is here, including the file that you need to download, the usage instructions. There's even a demo video here. Now, this is basically just some character model mods 
but there's a lot here. You have classic wrestlers like Demolition, the Legion of Doom. You have celebrities that range from the world of sports to the world of cinema, like Sylvester Stallone. Uh, Mike Tyson is on here as well. You even have Ryu, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and a bunch of other ones that are on there. You can tell this was made with a lot of effort, and it's not every day that you see mods for a wrestling game on a console. So this is absolutely a welcome addition. And now we switch on over to the 3DS scene where we're going to cover a couple of things here, starting with this brand new homebrew and a pretty exciting one, especially for those of you who ever wondered what it would be like to stream your PC games onto your 3DS, which is exactly what this does. This is Tiny VNC. This is version 1.0. The VNC, by the way, stands for Virtual Network Computing. It allows you to connect to a VNC server and then you can control that device. Now you can see a screenshot here. Actually, I don't know if you can see it all that well, but you can see a PC there and you can see that they are controlling it via the 3DS. Anyway, in this demo video here, this individual actually connects and runs CMU, which is a Wii U emulator for the PC. So they start it up, they load Breath of the Wild uh, through CMU, and then they are able to play Breath of the Wild, the Wii U version, on their 3DS because it's streaming, they can control it and everything else. And it actually looks like it moves pretty good and it looks fairly smooth. I'm thoroughly impressed. This is something I will definitely for sure try. Now, it's early, so keep in mind that of course you may run into bugs here and there, but the developer stated that they are working to improve it, which is always a plus. When you come to the GitHub page, most of all the instructions and what you need is actually in the releases page itself. So make sure you read over everything so you know how to set it all up. The files that you need are down at the bottom. This looks like it would be a lot of fun. I can't wait to try it. And it opens up a whole world of possibilities for your little modded 3DS. And the last thing we'll be covering for the 3DS is another update to Twilight Menu. I've covered this a boatload of times. This is an emulator type deal that allows you to play your backed up ROMs from various old school systems like Nintendo, old school 8-bit, 16-bit systems and handhelds, as well as Sega. And I think it even does TurboGrafx-16 now. When you go to the releases, you can see here that they've done a couple of bug fixes as well as added a dark 3DS skin. This works on multiple platforms, so when you come here, just grab the file that pertains to your particular platform, and then you'll be set. So that's pretty much it, guys. I told you it was going to be fairly short, not a whole lot going on. I did already cover a couple of things in previous videos, including yesterday's video where I covered that crappy host menu that just came out by French SGK. By the way, that led to some nice juicy drama, and I'm going to have to do a follow up to that video because not only are these devs absolute a-holes, they're incredibly shady. So I decided I'm going to just rip them a new one and I might as well do it in a follow-up video. Plus, I'm going to show just how crappy that menu is as I walk you through some of the motions and show you that things just don't work. And I'll be doing a follow-up video to all of the fallout going on from the arrest of Team Executor and just a bunch more stuff that I have lined up for you guys. You know I appreciate you watching. If you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or just entertaining or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel you guys know the best way to do any of that stuff just to hit the like button maybe subscribe if you haven't already much love going out there to everyone be careful be safe but have fun and we will see you on the next one